TikToker, filmmaker, real estate agent, Olivia Vitale joins us now. Olivia, thank you for taking the opportunity. Thank you for having me on your show, Chris. So what brand of Italian is your family? Do they go with Vitale? Do they go with Vitale? Do they go with Vital? How do they say their last name? Um, Vitale or Vital, either one is fine. They're always messing up our names, the Italian names. Um, but, you know, good for you, except yeah. I think you sold yourself short there uh, a little bit, and I want to address that, um, because I've talked to Mr. Gonsalves, and we've dealt with his family a good amount. They have trust issues when it comes mm -hmm. to this investigation. It started uh, very early on, and it's not unusual for a victim's family, and it may have been exacerbated here by time and not knowing certain things and not getting information that started to come from outside sources, including you and you've developed quite the bond with them as a result right mm-hmm yes a few weeks ago um, Steve reached out to me and it turns out that Kaylee followed me on TikTok and she watched my videos and shared them with her family so this is a personal connection and we've been in touch in the past few weeks and they welcomed me into their home and it's been an honor to meet them and help bring awareness to their daughter's case and uh, people will hear that and say, wait, how did Kaylee follow her and watch her videos about her own murder? No, you started with Gabby Petito and uh, you did some uh, you did some field work on it. You went down into uh, different locations that were relevant. You found a water bottle uh, that you believe and the family believes uh, may have belonged to Gabby. And that was very meaningful to the family. And that's what uh, Kaylee and many others were paying attention to. Uh, how surprised were you and how quick was the growth of your following that is now over a million? Um, it, yeah, it was pretty surprising. It happened fairly quickly and it just seems like it's my calling to help uh, missing people and, and victims and their families. Now, what is your skill set? How do you know how to find anything that's going on? It's one thing to go down and walk around in a field and find a water bottle, which is a great little piece of personal industry. Um, but what do you bring to the table and how did you develop, uh, develop those skills? Well, one thing I do bring to the table is bringing awareness to cases. With my following, I have a lot of exposure, and all it takes at the end of the day is for one person who might have seen something to see possibly one of my videos and notice something and call the tip line. And that's what I can do is just bring awareness and help cases that are slowly dying or becoming cold get the exposure that they need. Why? Why true crime? Why are you one of these new sleuthers? Uh, what is it about these? You could be, you know, you could be obsessed with so many different things in our culture as a pursuit when you're not selling real estate. Why this? True crime is something important to me because it's about helping and making an impact in the world. I feel like it's my duty and this gives me passion. It gives me something to live for and just to feel like I'm making an impact in the world. You uh, said in one of your uh, descriptions in the documentary that you and uh, Mr. Gonsalves shared a moment when the suspect's picture came out and you both said, this is the guy, this is, this is the man. Um, do you believe that? Do you believe that uh, this is the person responsible? And do the Gonsalves family and or you share any questions about anybody else being involved or the question maybe not being as solid as is assumed? Personally, I do believe that um, the suspect, Brian Koberger, is responsible. I can't speak um, on behalf of the Gonzalez family, but um, I personally think it is Brian. As of now, I believe that he was the only one who did this. But again, it's the early stages and we're not sure exactly. What is your biggest question that remains that hasn't been answered? My biggest question is why did he do this? And did he ever meet any of the victims in passing, possibly at a restaurant? We know that Zaina and Maddie worked at the Mad Greek. Um, they had vegan options. Brian Koberger was vegan. It's possible that maybe he met the girls maybe at a bar. These are, there are so many unanswered questions and I believe that 
there is a moment in time when their paths crossed. It's very possible. And that's the question that I have. Did they ever meet in passing? Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.